This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. Support the channel, get exclusive TLDR videos, and an ad-free experience by signing up using the link in the description. Boris Johnson has had a tough week. He was booed at the Jubilee, performed surprisingly poorly in Monday's vote of no confidence, and has basically had four days of headlines speculating about his imminent demise. So in this video, we'll take a look at the challenges that Johnson faces over the next few weeks and months, as well as the tools available to his enemies that may still be trying to get rid of him. As you probably already know, on Monday, 359 Tory MPs held a vote of confidence in Johnson. The man who was once lauded as a great electoral asset won 211 votes to 148, which only translates to about 59% support among his own Conservative colleagues. To give you some context, back in 2018, Theresa May faced a similar vote of no confidence and was backed by some 63% of her party. So while Johnson did win the vote, he did significantly worse than Theresa May, and she ended up resigning mere months later when it became clear that she still couldn't command the confidence of her own MPs. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that Johnson's toast. Obviously, governing does become more difficult once you've explicitly lost the support of 40% of your party. But it's worth remembering that the current situation is, in some respects, quite different from that of late 2018 and early 2019 with Theresa May. That's because during this time, May was desperately trying to push her Brexit deal through Parliament. And it wasn't going well. On one of her attempts, she failed by such a big margin that it marked the largest government loss in House of Commons history. And then after that, she failed to push through her deal on two other successive occasions. In essence then, the vote of no confidence on its own wasn't the end of Theresa May. It was the vote and then her subsequent political failures. Similarly then, Johnson's survival will probably depend on how he and his party perform over the next couple of months. And there are basically two tests coming up on the horizon, the June by-elections and the Privilege Committee investigation. So let's take a look at what these things are and how they could end up playing out. The first thing for him to worry about are the two by-elections set to be held on the 23rd of June with those taking place in Wakefield and Tiverton and Honiton. The former was triggered by the resignation of Imran Ahmed Khan, a former MP who was found guilty of sexually assaulting a child, while the latter was triggered by the resignation of Neil Parrish, the MP who was caught watching pornography in the House of Commons. And it's also worth noting that Wakefield is a so-called red wall seat, which the Conservatives won by 7.5% in 2019, having been held by Labour since 1932. Despite that impressive victory not that long ago, things aren't looking good for Johnson here. The two polls done in this area give Labour a 20 and 23 point lead respectively. Now, in some sense, this is unsurprising, given that Labour did beat the Tories by a similar margin in the recent local elections in Wakefield. But if the polling ends up being accurate, it's still a pretty terrible result. Things are made even worse by the fact that 60% of people polled, including 31% of people who voted Tory in 2019, said that they felt negative about Boris Johnson personally while 47% said that they believed voting for the Conservatives would reward Boris Johnson for his behaviour. Now, unfortunately, there aren't any polls for Tiverton and Honiton just yet. But again, things aren't looking good for the Conservatives. And if Johnson were to lose here, it would be a shockingly bad result. While Wakefield could easily be described as a red wall seat, Tiverton and Honiton is what you might call a blue wall seat. It's rural, it's elderly, and it's been conservative since its inception in 1997. And its predecessors, the constituencies of Tiverton and Honiton respectively, have been conservative held since the 1880s, with the exception of a brief liberal spell in Tiverton from 1923 to 1924. You get the idea then. Tiverton and Honiton has been a conservative stronghold for literally 150 years, so losing it would be pretty terrible. 
Unfortunately for Johnson, though, while the Conservatives won the seat by a massive 40% margin in 2019, which translates to a 24,000 vote majority, the bookies currently give the Lib Dems an 80% chance of winning in the constituency. And the Lib Dems have precedent here, too. They easily overturned a similar 23,000 Conservative majority in the North Shropshire by-election back in December. And if anything, Tiverton and Honiton could be even easier for them. Not only are the Conservatives in a worse position than they were in December, but it's also worth noting that Tiverton and Honiton's recent local election results were even less blue than North Shropshire. Anyway, you get the point. Johnson's currently on track to fail the by-election test. And there's also the real possibility that he fails the second test too, the Privilege Committee investigation. Now, their job at the moment is to conclude whether Johnson deliberately or accidentally misled the House of Commons when he said that there were no illegal parties in number 10 and that COVID rules were followed at all times. And as we explained in this video, it's quite possible that the committee end up finding that Johnson did mislead the House. And that is crucial because the ministerial code, which ministers, including the prime minister, are expected to follow, is quite clear that those who mislead the house should resign. So in summary, it's not looking good for Johnson. And there's a real possibility that he fails both tests. And if he does, the pressure on him could become insurmountable. But what then? Well, as we alluded to earlier, he would be expected to resign. And this is ultimately what ended May's premiership before him. She succumbed to this political pressure. Johnson seems different, though. His personality means that he might just outright refuse. In retaliation to the by-elections, he could simply say that there's another two years until the next election, and that in that time, he could win the electorate back with major moves like tax cuts. And in relation to the Privileges Committee, he could either rewrite the ministerial code between now and the conclusion of the investigation, or if he's found to have lied, he could simply just say that he disagrees with the committee's findings and that he didn't break the ministerial code. And therefore, there's nothing to make him resign. If this does happen, the only realistic option available to Conservative MPs is to rewrite the rules of the 1922 committee. Currently, the Tory rulebook states that if a Prime Minister wins a vote of no confidence, they're immune from another vote for 12 months. However, the 1922 committee themselves get to decide the rules, and as such, they can change them if they see fit. Exactly how they do this is unknown, as their rules are private. However, it's worth noting that while head honcho Sir Graham Brady has said very little about his personal views on Johnson, the vice chairs have been a bit more open. WAG put in a letter of no confidence in Johnson in December of last year, and Ghani has been open about the fact that she was fired from her job as Minister for Transport because she was Muslim. About this, she said that all I ever wanted was for his government to take this seriously, investigate properly, and ensure that no other colleague has to endure this. So it seems that she might not be a Johnson fan either. And while Wag and Ghani wouldn't just change the rules simply because they don't like Johnson, it's an indicator that changes within the 1922 committee's rulebook are a real possibility. Possibility. Such a change could ultimately allow Johnson to face another vote of no confidence in less than 12 months. And if another vote were to happen after two by-election losses and Johnson being found guilty of lying to the Commons, well, you can't guarantee that he'd get a majority of MPs' support. All in all then, things don't look good for Johnson. And while we shouldn't expect him to go down without a fight, it's probably wise for the Conservatives to begin considering a replacement. So TLDR writers Zach, Ben, Nelson and I sat down to argue over who the next Conservative leader could be after Johnson, and it got heated, with each team member submitting their top five potential candidates and defending it to the group. So if you want to check out that full discussion, then you can find it exclusively on Nebula. As you likely know, Nebula is a streaming service that we've built with some of our creator friends, including all of these awesome people that you probably already watch. And if you do sign up, you can watch our full discussion about the potential new Tory leader. But you'll also get tons of other exclusive TLDR content, including our team's recent attempt at the British citizenship test, and even a tour of our new office, as well as all of our videos being ad-free. 
If you're interested and you do want to sign up, then you'll want to use the link below to get the Nebula Curiosity Stream bundle deal. Here's how it works. If you sign up to Curiosity Stream, home of the best documentaries online, then you'll also get Nebula included absolutely free. That means for less than $15 a year, you can get both services. Curiosity Stream for the high quality documentaries and Nebula for the bonus TLDR. Doing so gets you more content and really supports the channel. So thanks for your help.